Hey everyone, welcome to Pageant Professors. I'm Nicole and this is Preeta. And today we're talking about microphones and your introduction at your pageant. You know, I think most girls know that they've got to prepare for their swimsuit, their evening gown, their interviews, but interacting with a microphone isn't something that is really top of mind. And if you're anything like me, I've never been a performer. <laughs> I've never sung on stage. And so when I first started competing in pageants, that was one of the first times I'd ever been speaking into a microphone. I completely agree. A lot of times it's so easy to forget the preparations needed to nail your introduction. A lot of times this is the first time that you just, either the judges will be seeing you or maybe they'll be, you know, first time they'll be seeing you on stage. So it's so important that you present your best self. And unfortunately, the technology of a microphone can sometimes end up hurting you and making you look unprepared or on, unpolished. Right. So we have some advice for you today. Uh, in our mic check article for things that you can do to make sure you nail your introduction on stage. Number one, mm -hmm. I think it's really important to know when it's your turn. Yes. You know, you always see some hesitation for girls that are unprepared or forget if the person on the left is going first or they're going first. So Allie has a great tip to follow the girl, you know, throughout the week that you're going to be behind. Right in line and I think that's genius. <laughs> when you're there during pageant week or maybe during orientation or rehearsals it's so easy to get bored and just say this isn't the real yeah. thing I'm not going to pay attention but pay attention the stage choreographers are there and they're telling you important stuff that you're going to want to know mm -hmm. when it comes time for pageant day. I think especially if it's your first time on stage and your first competition you get nervous. There's so many yeah. other things to talk about or think about. You're like standing in really high heels and you're wearing an outfit and you gotta get your smile right. So it's easy to just have, to forget all of the microphone etiquette mm -hmm. that you might have learned. So really pay attention, ingrain that in your mind during orientation and rehearsals. So that way when you're on stage with all those other concerns, how to speak properly into the microphone isn't one of them. Yeah, and I think it tells a lot to the judges, your family, and the staff, frankly, if you don't take direction or you don't pay attention. Right. Because frankly, the choreography during states or locals is going to be a lot less difficult than if you make it to nationals. And if they're not confident that you can handle the choreography and you know the stage positioning during your pageant weekend, they're probably not going to have a lot of confidence to you know bring you to the next level. Yeah, remember that this is a show. There are people yeah. in the audience that have paid you know, money for these tickets. There's an entertainment, obviously they're there to support their uh, contestant, but the choreographers, the producers, and the directors of the show want to make sure that their show looks amazing. Yeah. So if you're at a state level or even an international or a national or international level, you'll notice that the choreographers for the bigger pageants look during rehearsals to see who's doing the best job, yeah. who's paying the most attention, who's doing it right, because those are the people that they're gonna want front and center in those shows. Those are the people that are probably gonna get the, the prime real estate on the stage, because those are the ones that they know have been paying attention and won't mess up, look awkward, look lost, and uh, just end up making the show look sloppy. Exactly. So, there's nothing worse than a contestant <sighs> that's like yelling into the microphone, like yelling to the point where you couldn't even hear mm -hmm. how old they were, what their name was, and where they came from. Right, or on the opposite side of that, someone who whispers into the microphone, yeah. or <laughs> there, there's so many things. It sounds like such a trivial part of pageant competition to focus on is microphone etiquette, but there are so many things that you can do that will literally shoot yourself in the foot. Absolutely. Not literally, I guess, figuratively. Figuratively. <laughs> Things like, if you've never, like Nicole was saying, if you aren't a performer, if you're not used to being on stage and working with a microphone, see if there is either a friend or yeah. an auditorium at your school or some way for you to get in front of a microphone ahead of time. Because we all think, oh, it's a microphone. You yeah. just talk into it normally. And that's mm -hmm. true, but there's a lot of things that you need to practice for. Example, how far back or how close to it sure. that you stand. And that also will affect whether you're yelling or whether you're too quiet. So practice, find a way to practice, get in front of a microphone, even one time will vastly improve how well you do on stage. Yeah, I love that Ellie calls this next point the drive-by oh because it's exactly what it is. And you've seen it, we all see it, it happens every time there's a mm -hmm. contestant 
that is in line, takes her turn, and before she can even finish her sentence, she's like off the stage and like away from the microphone. Right. <laughs> Choreographers are wonderful. I've just they're they're all about producing the stage properly, but they're also on a time limit. So yeah. they're gonna tell you girls, get up, get out, and go. But when it comes to your introduction, do not rush it. Don't speak until you're at the microphone. Exactly. Don't, you know, if you come in, if you're talking on your way up or before you're actually at the microphone, guess what? They're not gonna know that your name is Nicole Ortiz. No. They're just gonna hear Ortiz. Yeah. Then they're not Or gonna, just Nicole. Yeah, or just Nicole. <laughs> or something something county. Yeah. <laughs> you know, they're they're not going to know who you are. And you're gonna be on and off before they even get a chance to appreciate your look, your outfit, you know, everything about you on stage. So wait till you walk up to the microphone, stand there for a second, say your introduction, pause for a moment, and then walk off. Doesn't matter if everyone is running by. You want to take that moment and really cherish the time on stage. Exactly. And strike a pose. Don't be afraid to take that two seconds that you're up there while you're saying your name and your age and everything put the hand on the hip, you know, whatever you're comfortable with, strike a pose. I think that that will exude confidence, your personality, and a lot of things that, you know, the judges and the audience haven't seen yet. Yeah, I call it the uh, take, take your power pose. Yeah. There's a pose up there, like you said, one hand on the hip, both hands on the hip, whatever pose that you think you look the most confident, the most uh, stunning in, take that. Because even though they'll tell you that your introduction usually isn't scorable, you, you don't get a second chance at a first impression. So this is when the judges, they might not have to write down a number score for you, but they are gonna say, wow, who is that girl? I can't wait to see her in Sinsu, yeah. or I can't wait to see her in Evening Gown. So get up there, nail it, it'll be great. Yeah, I remember getting my photos back from this United States you know, a couple years ago, and there's a photo of me doing my intro, and it's like the hand on the hip. I like did some like head movement, and I was like, "Who is this person?" It was just like so sassy, and you know, the photographer caught it in that moment, and I'm glad that that's what I looked like on stage when I was giving my introduction. Yeah, and speaking of poses, the other thing that you should keep in mind is even if you're not the one at the microphone yet, I was thinking about Maryland USA when we competed. They had us all kind of crowd in towards yeah. the microphone. Just because it's not your turn yet, don't think you're not, not on. being seen. <laughs> there's, some, there's, a, there's a group shot, and I think there's a picture of myself, and it wasn't my turn, and luckily I was doing the pose, okay. so it was okay, but there were girls around me that were just like, looking off to the side, were not standing straight, were kind of like yeah. shrugged over, really nervous, and maybe in their thoughts, but they, people can still see you. You're not invisible mm -hmm. until that microphone is on you, so be aware of your presentation even when it's not your turn because just as we said in our Evening Gown 101 video, anytime you're on stage, your goal should be to have all eyes on you for positive reasons, Absolutely. but <laughs> you always want to be uh, spot on. So another thing that Ali talks about in the article that is so, so important is making sure that you wait for the applause to die down. If you're behind a contestant who has her friends and her family and they're screaming and excited for her, don't start with your introduction until that applause dies down. It's so easy to want to be rushed and in and out, uh, but don't, don't feel like you have to start talking just when the other person has left the microphone. Right. Stand up there, strike your power pose, and really let the audience die down a little bit so you can give your introduction. and and the judges make sure that they hear it. Absolutely, I mean, you've earned that moment, mm -hmm. and you know, the last contestant, her friends and family had the opportunity to cheer and root for you, so you know, your friends and family have the same right to have that moment to root for you and to cheer and throw their signs up, so. Right. <laughs> Don't feel like you have to run off the stage at all, and, and while you're on there, it's also important to make sure you're making eye contact with the judges. You're there, your friends and your family are there, they're yelling and screaming for you, and you know, it's great because that helps boost your energy and your confidence, but don't, don't look out just into the audience. Make sure that you're making eye contact with the judges. Those are the ones that are obviously there, they're determining your score. So when you're saying, you know, Preta Coley, 28 from Washington, D.C., make sure you're saying it to the judges, not to your friends and family, not just to the Oblivion of audience. Right. <laughs> so that's a great point. Making sure that you wait for the applause, volume control, 
giving yourself enough space between you and the microphone, mm -hmm. practicing with a microphone. Uh, those are all great ways and, you know, we'll all guarantee that you have a great introduction for your next pageant. So if you have any suggestions, maybe things that you've used to prepare for your introduction, we want to hear about them. Sound off in the comments below and we can't wait to see what you come up with. Did you know that there are some really common mistakes that girls make during the evening gown portion of their competition? Click on the link in the description below and you'll be taken to our website for a free 30 minute long training course. By the end of it, you'll learn how to avoid these common mistakes and master the evening gown portion of your competition today.